everybody, what's going on? We're going back into my garage today because I'm going to be turning this Z Hunter machete that I got off of Amazon, I think. You can see it's all blacked out with a paracord handle, very tactical, into this much more period-looking falchion messer. I custom ground it a better, more ergonomic wooden handle, and I ground off all of the black paint, resharpening it in the process. Quick disclaimer, this isn't meant to be a tutorial per se, I am by no means an expert so you follow at your own risk, but if you have the capabilities, I think this is a really fun, cost-effective project. Alright, I got a pair of gloves to protect my hands, I'm wearing a mask to protect from saw or paint dust, I'm sure we're all familiar with masks at this point, I'm wearing a hat to protect my hair, some glasses... Here's a couple shots of what the handle looks like once I took the paracord off. Now, I recommend using a lighter grit sandpaper from the start. I found it did a better job of stripping off the paint more quickly. I'm using 220 grit here. So I'm going to be doing this for the next several hours. I wanted to take a second to point out that cheaper made tactical stuff like this are often painted black to hide the abysmal grind job on the actual metal. You can see down here towards the hilt where the machine actually ground across the blade instead of down it, so that's going to take a lot of resanding to buff out. I have to take out the tang pin, yes there was only one, so I'm going to be using a hacksaw and then I'm going to trim off the top and pull it through with a pair of pliers. So that's going to mark the end of day one. It's been about six hours that I've been grinding and sanding this piece. Most of the paint is off, but I've still clearly got a lot of work to do. I did try using a rotary tool, but that didn't speed the process up to any significant amount. But with the last fading light of day, I must retreat into the safety of my hovel, and I will return to work again in the morn, when it is safe. I survived the night. I've been out here for a couple hours and I moved from 220 to 400 grit sandpaper, and then a scotch bright buffing pad. You can see the grain of this stainless steel is turning out pretty decent. For the handle, I'm using this humble pine 1x3. This was my dumb setup for cutting it to shape. I don't recommend anyone cutting on a folding table. I moved to some saw horses and used a jigsaw to cut out the rough shape that I wanted. I left a little bit of extra room around the perimeter just in case I make a mistake later, and this way I can grind everything down once it's attached and it will look nice and flush. I drilled in the pinholes after marking them against the tang and did some preliminary shaping. I also wanted to add finger grooves, so I'm going to be doing that now as well. So I did this the backwards way, where I made the handle first and then tried to cut it in half. I don't recommend doing it this way. It's really scary because you do hours and hours and hours of work and then you just destroy it a matter of seconds later. So next time I definitely split first, then clamp the wood and carve. The sandpaper in this ridiculous setup was meant to keep the handle from sliding around like that. So the handle ended up chipping on the end, not a huge deal because thankfully I left enough room that I'll be grinding off the damaged bits anyway, but I figured I would take this as an opportunity to show how I would fix this if I really had to. I ground and glued an extra little piece onto the broken slot and then sanded it all back down once it was dry, you can't even tell that it was damaged. For attaching the handle, I was originally going to try using a historical technique used on doors, where I use nails and bend them over like staples, but that looks like utter crap here. I have a pop riveter as well, which looks fine on the one side, but again, doesn't look that nice on the opposite side. In the meantime, I dyed my pine a dark walnut, oiled it, and used a wax finish. The finishes do rub the dye off slightly, FYI. I've decided to use these cut nails because I think they will look the best. I put one through each tang hole on one side, filled what will be the entire center with wood glue, and then dropped in the nail on the other side to make my own rivets. Time will tell how sturdy this is. So there we go. I haven't stress tested it or anything, but thus far I'm very pleased with how this turned out. Add a leather sheath and I'd feel very comfortable bringing this out as an anachronistic but period looking tool. This is a great solution for people who want a very entry level sword, but would rather spend more time than money. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.